Welcome back, armchair generals, to the Great Crusade against Bolshevism, or otherwise known as a reckless invasion of the Soviet Union. Okay, so let's continue this. Um, we've got a lot pushing east. this big stack right there. Who needs, they do, they need some sort of supplies. Who else could use some sort of supplies, I think, I guess.
Okay, Ghost Division, come up this way. How long? Okay, 26 hours. And then up there. And you attack that one. Underused air power to attack your right. Let's put you up here, air intercept. Yeah. Do it. You know your night fairs are putting it day as well as night. Lost. Long until I get there, August first. And then you only have a few more hours.
in here. said before I think, I think I said before, I know I said it sometime in my life, but recently for you to hear, I think I'm going to try to surround Moscow unless we find it just somehow miraculously with hardly anything inside of it. And then we try to push into it, you know, just if there's, oh, right, okay, um, you come back here, you start walking up there, Give a little more firepower support to that move, to that advance. Okay, we've got our vehicle. So, all of these guys that just came up here, not those. They can stay just in case there's some sort of nutty invasion up there. To Murmansk. Come down here, yeah, transport. Oh, then we need to create a supply convoy. Let's go through Kiel, that's pretty close. Supply source to Archangel. And I guess you guys can come down on this side of the river. As you can see, it's been sort of mixed results. So he's pushing in a bit on the Finn's, Finn's pushing back in a few good spots. Maybe they may be going to lose that. I think they had that for a while, but we're going to try to close this up. Yeah, I see the that coming there. And now we will give them a mix support. Are they being attacked or something? Oh yeah. Okay, well um Okay, good. Lots of events here. Yes, we, I knew we were going to do that. Okay, we're now an Air Force producer. Um, okay, um, 
so oh, okay we got a we, we're controlling enough um altenburg and baku oh we've got baku okay and armor producer which is probably also has a few things including baku so we are now we get plus five percent on money which we need and minus seven and a half percent build speed and my like, same thing for armor Soviet Union Molotov is dead Ooh, that um, will uh, hurt their national unity okay lots of events lots of events okay Barone I think you pronounce it something close like that the Romanian Romanian poet Tudor Aganzi has published a pamphlet titled Barone thou Baron against our ambassador in Bucharest Manfred Fry or Freiherr von Killinger Manfred Freiherr von Killinger um, such a von Killinger such an appropriate name Ian Antonescu, the Prime Minister, ordered imprisonment of the author and confiscated all of the copies of the newspaper. And there's a copy of the paper and there's a picture of him. Okay, a um, little background on this. Um, uh, Manfred Freiherr von Killinger was um, the German ambassador to Romania. One, as I've talked before, of the ambassadors to this region that were all... S.A. Um, Obersternbandfuhrers, I don't know. I'm sorry. Yeah, I really get all those because there's um, uh, Sturmbands, Obersternbands, um, Obers... Uh, yeah, I'm basically an S.A. general. Sorry, I don't know his exact title, which he maintained... Oh, they all maintained the ambassador of Romania, Hungary, Bulgaria... And um, Croatia all maintained their SA membership and such. This was part of um, blood and soil racial wars in this region. And I put it that way as I've come to really understand national socialism much, in my opinion, more clearly. I say that, and it's sort of a murky world, but it isn't just fascism that hates Jews particularly. It is really more of a racial um, war, and um, it's how Hitler and the upper levels, upper echelons of the Nazis saw it. Again, I'm not saying this was your average Nazi party member who is a farmer, factory worker, whatever. Not talking about those people. They were influenced by the propaganda and they may have had natural anti-Semitism. They may have had natural inclinations towards fascism and definitely many of them had natural inclinations towards uh, authoritarianism. I'm not talking about these average guys because a lot of them were, um, they believed they were staunch Protestants or staunch Catholics, which Nazism, National Socialism is its own religion. It has its own worldview creationist views and its own views of higher powers um, and i i sort of say that because there's it's they're conflicting it isn't there isn't one bible or little red book where all the truth and nothing is contained and nothing can be disputed there's a lot of disputes going on within the nazi movement at the higher levels which sort of does make it a bit hard to categorize it because you have I forget what's his name, who, tried, who starts early on in 1933, the um, uh, German Nazi church, you know, that's trying to co-op um, the sort of Protestant church in Germany, which fails miserably, but a lot of anti-Christian elements go, Nazis were Christians, look at what they were doing. No, they were trying to go in and um, really wreck it from the inside. And if you look at their beliefs and some of the stuff that they put out at the period, that Christ or their Christ was this some other German guy. And so they were trying to wreck it from within. There were, um, which is clearly a religion as well. Um, 
atheism. You know, they believe, notice belief, there is no God. It is a religion. There were some elements of that, but so that it, it's all mixed up in all of this stuff. But this, it was this viewpoint. And so that they put in these four ambassadors into the region, um, not to, you know, and they didn't have, um, it's outside of um, sort of former Yugoslav territories. They didn't have like SA men on the street. I don't, I'm not wanting to say that. Obviously, these are SA generals, generally in their diplomatic role. Or they weren't putting, you know, German soldiers or SS troops to, to do this stuff so much. But they were very much there to try to cleanse the population of unwanted peoples, particularly Jews at the moment. They were very much um, uh, pushing this sort of agenda. And because these people were, um, these four men particularly, were diehard believers in this um, views I'm talking about of National Socialism, and that they believed that there were not like you see in the movies, vampires and werewolves, you know, necessarily. They didn't, people didn't change from a human physical form necessarily. I say necessarily because I don't know what an individual believes, but the way they talk about them, werewolves, they are sort of... Um, influenced humans that um, protect the German peoples. Werewolves are good things in not National Socialism. Vampires. They believed in vampires. Again, not so much the the movie type, and that, but they do talk about, um, particularly in some of the partisan warfares in the former Yugoslavia, some vampires, and that partisans sucking victims' bloods, you know, drinking the blood of the victims. So that, yes, to a degree, it goes to the literal sense and not that they would turn into bats and fly away. But they also talk about vampirism in a sort of in a Jewish form in that uh, uh, vampirism through misogyny, through um, interracial breeding, a vampirism of that format, not. Again, in most cases, a literal drinking of the blood, not that, you know, they're turning into bats and flying away. So I, I I want to be clear that it is it it it, it can sound very nutty at very level at various levels and it is sort of nutty at various levels but they definitely believe it. Okay, well this von Klinger um, I have an interesting picture of him standing over an animal shot. He was an avid hunter as well. Nothing wrong with being an avid hunter. I know that's politically incorrect, but that isn't um, where where he was but all these guys are there they're true believers in national socialism and they're pushing it on a generally a catholic in some cases orthodox um uh, but generally strong christian countries they are not very good charmers they're not you know um good diplomats they're not van ross or van poppins or those type of guys they are boorish in many cases they are you know they have their true belief thoughts that doesn't necessarily agree so they don't get along very well and um manfred freiherr von Killinger, um at about the time of the romanian surrender slash switch sides against the germans um goes into his office shoots his secretary and a few other people you know german diplomatic staff and then shoots himself yeah, he, you know, not the most pleasant sort of guy. So I, I don't blame this guy for, for being upset, but it hurts our relations with Romania. British raid in Libya. Okay, yeah, what the F? Particularly as seeing as... Oh, here. Okay, looks like the Italians will have it under control. That should not be firing again. I haven't heard from Revolver held in a while. Probably busy with real life. Um, but we need some of the better check for control. You know, if access controls enough of these ports. Can't raid Libya. Ukrainian Liberation Army, supported by General um, Kestring, who was responsible for formations of Eastern Legions. The UVV grew in size and by 1942 included up to 50,000 men. Towards the end of the war, UVV had reached. 80,000, the UVV included 
as part of the Wehrmacht and was supplied with lots of German officers. Again, um, this is another interesting phenomenon. These are maybe a bit more Cossack types. Um, you see the POH Pals of Adolf, as they call them in the Channel Islands. Um, tanker so he would be a Russian tanker. Hit that collar patch there would show him to be a um, also one of these Eastern guys, and obviously the Cossacks wearing the big sort of Russian style shoulder boards. So. Um, even as the war isn't going well, many of these people joined various formations, sometimes because they had been cooperating at other levels in a non-sort of combat way and realizing that eh, they're sort of screwed, you know, when the Soviets take over. So might as well fight and then try to retreat to the West, even though they know they're losing and maybe have... Oh, delusions that, um, or, you know, wanted to believe in the delusions that the Germans are handing out that they've got super weapons and whatnot, so, but got to fight. Okay. Bow Commando Becker Martyr Conversions from 1942 through 1943. Becker salvaged all the um, usable tank wreckage he found in France, creating some 18,000 armored fighting vehicles from July to August 42. Becker converted 170 armored vehicles into Martyr 1, 75 millimeter um, self propelled anti tank gun, plus a further 160 chassis were converted into um, self propelled artillery pieces. I don't know exactly what that is, unless that's just generically a Martyr 1. That looks like it's on a, um, well, hey. I'm not sure what that is. It, was a, it doesn't look like a Lorraine tractor tra to me, but maybe it is. Because I believe most of those were on Lorraine um, tractors, which are fully tracked, um, lightly arm armored, um, you know, thanks to tow artillery or any tank guns or bring ammunition into combat zones kind of things is what they are. Um, with 94 conversions to carry 150 millimeter howitzers. I think most of those weren't, and this is old black ice vent, which I love this chain. Um, I think those are 150 millimeter infantry guns, which are different than the howitzers. And 12 more to carry the 105 millimeter. Those are the howitzers meaning length of barrel and type of shell that they shoot. In addition, he produced 30 artillery observation vehicles using the same chassis, yes. Okay, good. I think those are mostly on the Lorraine um, tractors. Okay. Um, Laval declares for the German Reich. Laval had returned to power in April 42 in a radio speech he gave. On the 22nd of June, he outlined his policy objectives, expressing his desire to reestablish normal and trusting relations with Germany and Italy, he added that he wished for a German victory because otherwise Bolshevism would establish itself everywhere. Laval had been in power for a mere two months when he was faced with the decision of providing forced workers to Germany. The German Reich was short of skilled labor due to its need for troops for troop replacement on the Russian front. Unlike other occupied countries, France was technically protected by the armistice and its workers could not be simply rounded up for transportation. In the occupied zone, Germans used intimidation and control of raw materials to create unemployment, and thus reasons for French laborers to volunteer work in Germany. German officials demanded Laval send more than 300,000 skilled workers immediately to factories in Germany. Laval delayed, making a counteroffer of one worker in return for one French POW. The proposal sent to Hitler and a compromise re reach one prisoner war repatriated for every three workers living in Germany. Okay. So, oh, well, good. We get manpower and money. Vichy relations between the Soviet Union if they weren't already bad. And other things get worse. Okay. See, as I've said before, um, Laval was very much a collaborationist. Where I, you know, and the French people can judge whether today if they judge it just as harshly as they did in the post-war um, period of Patan. I really don't think Patan was a collaborationist. Was he Obviously, he collaborated, but 
he was trying to collaborate from the unoccupied zone to keep it unoccupied, if you will, and to eventually reestablish the rest of control of a independent France. And thinking that collaboration as opposed to total resistance was the best way to achieve that. We, that can be debated and you can debate his actions. But Laval, to me, is just an out-and-out, -out, um, well, if you want to call him traitor or whatever, but collaborationist with the Germans. A message from the 14th Panzer Corps leader von Wintershein. Um, I'm sure there are interesting news from the Muse sector. A Soviet unit, partially made up of factory workers and partially by Cossacks, was or has taken arms against its own comrades and after some heavy fighting has reached our lines and wishes to join our men in the Great Crusade against Bolshevism. This unit, led by Lieutenant Nikolai Nazarenko, was a prominent leader of Cossack underground resistance cell against communism, which we do historically. Nazarenko played important role in the good relations between Cossacks and Germans. He was a Russian born in Romania just after the 1917 revolution, joined the Romanian Royal Army, and was sent in an espionage mission behind Soviet borders, where he was captured. Sent into a gulag, he managed to escape, reach the um, Caucasus Mountains, and set up a resistance movement against communism. Conscripted by Red Army as soon as the Germans approached Tagang Rog, where he had become a factory worker, I'm sure not under his real name. He was given the command of a unit because of his previous military training, probably admitted to something. He later was liaison, maybe I'm wrong about, I just don't know that the Soviets would be former spy putting him as an officer if he, they knew what who he was. Leader of the um, liaison officer between von Panowitz, leader of the uh, Kosekin units of the hare and the Hamt Hamt Ver Waltung der Kosekin hare, the unit designed to administer the Cossack affairs led by Krasnov. Okay, we can form an independent unit. We'll get a um, unit set up, uh, created um, by Pavolini, my Italian friend, though this is, I think, in standard. Black Ice, we can't trust him. Merge units, which will gain just a little bit of manpower. So they also get the shocking news. Okay, we'll do that. Dairisa Rose. Dairisa Rose, the White Rose. German um, was a non-violent intellectual resistance group in Nazi Germany, consisting of students from the University of Munich, where the um, their philosophy pro and their philosophy professor. The group became known as are known for its anonymous leaflet and, and graffiti campaign lasting from June 1942 until February 43. They called for active opposition to the to dictator Adolf Hitler's regime. Yeah. Students from the University of Munich um, comprised the core of the White Rose. Hans Scroll, Sophie Scroll, Alex Schumerell, Willie Graft, Christopher Probst, Trout Lafrenz, Katerina Dubdenkoff, Lisoletta, Lilo Bernt, Eugen Weinstein, Marie Louise, ja Frank Harnack, Hubert Bert Wrangler, Wilhelm Geier, Manfred Eckenmeyer, Joseph Strongen, Henry Gunther, Heinrich Bollinger, Helmut Bauer, Harold Dawn, Rudy Alt, and later Joseph Jaeger. There are eight of the pictures. The White Rose. What are they thinking? So we're getting in Munich some anti-German or anti-Nazi propaganda, which is going to hurt our national unity a little bit. Not even a full percent, but and increase our um, descent just a tiny bit. Russia's Russia's. Schutzkopf Siberian, the Russian Corps, um, the Russian Guard Corps, the Russian Corps in Siberia. The separate Russian Corps, the Russia Schutzkopf Siberian, the unit had many names during its services. They're all variants of the names. As an armed force in Yugoslavia, predominantly composed of anti-communist Russian immigrants, commanded by Lieutenant General Boris um, Stifon, 
It served primarily as a guard force. The Russian Corps was formed by emigre white Russians and officers of the Russian Imperial Army, which had been defeated by the communists in the Russian Civil War 20 years earlier. They wore their white army uniforms until they were formally incorporated, incorporated into the Wehrmacht in December 1942. They would continue to fight against the Bolsheviks. It fought an alliance with Axis forces against the Partisans and later against the Red Army. An estimated 17,000 men went through the ranks, of which 10,000 became casualties. So we get these guys. Um, actually, the light tank there, I believe, behind them uh, belongs to... Um, uh, what's... Uh, um, these guys. Okay, I see them. Um, the Prince Eugen. But um, you can see them wearing... Um, those look like... Um, Czech hats, but they're wearing at least in this photo some Russian uniforms. So we can do this. Our embassy in Budapest has information. Our Hungarian um, friends assess, uh, assess that landings in North Africa has a certain likelihood. Okay, good to know. Um, well, I've already done this thing here. Conf group block. Block. Not block, but Bach. Okay, good. I don't like that. Kampf Gruppe, uh, Keitel, Knittel, Knittel. I don't know, is it hard? Okay. We like that too. Wehrmacht intelligence on enemy war potential 1942. According to incoming analysis from the Wehrmacht's military intelligence section, the British managed to establish a force of more than 1,500 land brigades. The Soviets commanded reportedly a force of 3,000 land brigades. USA established a force of um, 12,000 land units. The OKW needs to plan um, force allocation comp uh, composition accordingly, which show the Isets here prioritized for training and replacements. Okay, raise new units, replace losses, improve organization. Hmm. Historically, I think they raised new units. At least that was always Hitler's sort of. Hitler, and we can see, well, Hitler's not in that photo, but looking at maps, that's Antonescu. Um, that right there is von Manstein. I uh, don't know who that guy is. I don't know who he is either. Um, there's no two of them. Uh, always like looking at maps and what mattered was this not lots of stuff not lots of stuff well not the condition you know some of these units that are hollowed out that you know are only like half strength he does it doesn't matter so much it's these on the map is what he's looking at um well we just got another big hit and i think we're gonna get or, or not our big Boost to our manpower, replace losses, organization. Um, I think our organization's good. I do want more units, but I'm going to go replace losses. Antonescu visits Hare's Group South during the visit. Southern Russia, okay, so Romania loses one in descent. He likes what he's seeing. Mussolini visits the CSIR before departing um, to join Operation Barbarossa. The visit by Mussolini, Italy loses one in descent. Nice photo of Mussolini there with some German general walking in front of Italian troops. German army sees Kharkov, the seizure of the strategic position essential to keep up the pace of our conquest we need to quickly secure these positions for the next phase of our offensive great we're gonna lose one in descent and the unions gave the gains one there's group a south crosses the dawn advance 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 similarly there's group it crosses the river Dnieper at its southernmost part great there's group it crosses the river Bo. great it's doing great for that there's group a noise cross the Dnubaga. I'm butchering that. Pafe Shabhu. Ah. Um. Opo in Crimea. Yes. Um. Opo in. Um. Harris Group B or something. Um. Yes. Um. 
Yeah, and more Oppo, of course. To the north, yes. MBH in Gretchen Land in Greece, yes. The 270th Infantry Division was formed on the May 19th part of this. It was reformed on April in Northern. Okay, good. Prepare defenses up in Norway. Deploy the 15th Flak Division. We lose manpower supplies. Anti-aircraft guns in Dortmund. That's over here somewhere. Uh, get all of this stuff um, that looks like it okay we've got enough flat guns there we want to at least maintain three so we can read all of that play the 12th flat division in Cologne I think Cologne needs I need more flat guns, but we'll build it. I think historically they need, maybe, well, I don't know if I'm ever going to really mind it. Technical L Brigade um, starts work. Procedure in Baku, okay, yes, we haven't even gotten down to real Baku, but we've seen an oil rig there. Very good. Collapse of the Greek monetary system, yes, so we'll get more revolts, but we just have that port um, unit down there. Form the NSKK Transport Group A Spear is formed in July 42 as NSKK Group Trans uh, as NSKK Transport Group A Tote by merging NSKK Transport Brigade Tote and NSK Transport Brigade Spear in it with non-German. Okay, um, gain some manpower and a bunch of that or not? Yes, we'll take that. Deploy railway anti-aircraft, anti-air batteries. Due to the increasing attacks by Allied bomber formations deep into the Reich, um, the number of anti-aircraft units was increased to protect most of the important industrial facilities in and around major German cities. The heavily investment into anti-aircraft artillery further burdened the inadequate organization of the German armament efforts. Soon, the German Armament industry was not able to produce and equip AA guns with their standard gun carriages, thus many anti-aircraft batteries were permanently installed. The Luftwaffe in Bell Stabherr Mitt, responsible for the Reich Luftwaffe-Tigendung Reich Air Defense, ordered the formation of a railway anti-aircraft battery to compensate for the lacking mobility of part of his anti-air formations. Okay, we could do this. Cost us supplies. We don't have enough, but we can go into the hole and gain a little bit. Um, those are pretty big anti-aircraft guns. Um, if they're anti-aircraft guns. Yes, and they are. I don't know. Um, yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll do this. Okay. Mussolini withdraws ambassador from Moscow. Our embassy in Rome reports that when the Winter War broke out, Italy condemned the Soviet attack. Thousands of Italians turned out as volunteers. Students demonstrated their sympathy for in Rome in front of the Finnish embassy, while there was hostile demonstrations in front of the Soviet embassy. The new Soviet ambassador, who just arrived in Rome, had to return to Moscow to no avail. Unable to leave his credentials, Italy also called for his element ambassador. Okay. Well, that should have happened a long time ago, I guess. We have captured Soviet equipment. Be useful or gain supplies, metal raw material, or rare materials. Uh, we'll take the equipment. We'll take the equipment. We'll take the equipment. Um, Tito organizes a communist partisan movement in terms of the capitulation were extremely severe as this axis proceeded to dismantle Yugoslavia amid relative chaos that ensued the Communist Party of Yugoslavia and its organized units. Okay, led by um, Joseph Braun's Tito was banned after it's... Yeah. 
see. Okay, so another major uprising there. Goring meets with Mussolini in Rome. Uh huh. Okay, during the visit Hermann Goering of Hermann Goering to Italy in late January '42, the Duce um, reassured his German guest that the promised two army corps would be available in March '42. Okay. So proved relations there. Um, well. Down in Africa. Oh, they get pounded. There it is. Well, I can't say no to it. I mean, I could try to stick this over here forever, but um, this what I don't like about the non-optional bull. Um, you can make it up here, and I can sit here for a long time, and I can ignore it, ignore it, ignore it, and then, oh, I'm done with Africa, or I'm done with whatever, or um, I want it on the east front. Okay. Just got to do this. Just come up here. Just change the name. It'll look for and remove the specific name thing. Don't like doing this. I love the immersion. I love the idea. And presumably we'll see here in a moment that this... is probably a really nice unit. Okay, so yes. Okay, we have elite light infantry added to it, basically. Um, well, that's all no, we're going to put this into this way. Okay, captured Soviet, I love these things, reinforce it a bit, well, might as well send them somewhere a bit more east. guys here. Um, still have a few of those motor infantry units, so pretty far east. That's pretty good. Okay. Um, I attached a few to some headquarters that I thought was helpful. Okay, that's very nice that it's so far you to get moving there. And um, here's where you go, you're down in here. You can't attach, you can't drop a... Right there, so, um... 
I'll head to port. And we'll get him on board so we can get here soon. And get them going. If I can get these up here, okay, good. And get some of these guys out of there to somewhere else. Look at. Okay, um. There's group A. That was useful. Just break off two of these guys. Okay, by now I don't like you, so you get to get in charge of that. You get to come in and march and take these territories. Um, we can sort of stay where you're at. Down in Crimea. Okay, well, we were moving you down there to sort of do that, cover that territory, but we'll move you. Uh, well, no, well, let's just get you to sort of here. Reduce partisans. You get to the front line. Okay, Conf Group A. Oh, you'd like to join up with those Mandos, wouldn't you? Fuck. Let's add to let's add some commandos to you. Swamp. Okay, this is the sort of Siberian group here. I took the basic event that they had from Black Ice and sort of expanded it into this. Um, this is obviously the mobile force for dealing with um, Tito's partisans and crew. These sort of the different qualities that these guys actually have. A regular sort of fighting unit where these are just sort of militia types. These are not that overly good, but. I had the hardest time trying to research to get officers for these. Not some of these, all these guys are real officers that you see pictured here and named here from the period. And you see some of them wearing sort of German style uniforms, though the collar patches are a bit different. Some are wearing, you know, very Cossack y or um, uh, Russian type stuff. I don't know. You can see different types of hats and whatever. So caps or hats, whatever you want to call them, um, that were part of it, um, because I don't have a Cyrillic keyboard, and there's different English, or Roman, I should say, Roman alphabet um, uh, translations of their names, so, okay, not just the reconnaissance, that pretty sucks, okay, I was hoping for better than that. Well, um, at East, maybe we'll find a unit to attach you to. Um, okay, we got a bunch of Martyr Ones with propelled artillery. We'll see what we do about that. Okay, well. 
Let's say this. All right. And we're going to end the episode here. I want to thank you all for watching. I want to thank you for liking the videos. I really do appreciate that. And on that note, um, the more you like videos, the more YouTube is going to show you similar things as it sees it. So um, whether it's more of this playlist, you know, this series, or just more from this channel, or other channels, of course, you, you know, um, whatever channel it may be that you want to see more of. So hit that like button for both you and me. So um, you can get the stuff recommended to you. And, of course, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and post questions, comments, suggestions, ideas, criticisms, corrections. Love hearing from you. See you next time for more Hearts of Iron.